Hello and welcome. This is Health and Wellbeing, and I am your host, Lois Abbasambu. Health, they say, is wealth, and the quality of life in any of any nation depends on its healthcare system. And that is why nations around the world are putting in efforts to make sure that everyone has access to quality health care. And that is why the universal health coverage is about ensuring that people have access to the health care they need without suffering financial hardship. Today on the program, we will be discussing the need for every individual to be enrolled under health insurance. This discussion is going to commence immediately we come back from this break. Do stay with us. We are a nation blessed with people of diverse cultures, religions, languages and opinions. It is ironic that we are now being ripped apart by our greatest strength, our diversity. We have allowed intolerance, insensitivity, bigotry and nepotism to blind our vision of the greatness we can achieve working together as one. We may not have the same culture, nor religion, nor language, but we all belong to the same nation by the divine will of God. We did not choose to be Nigerians. Nigeria chose us. This nation is our divine heritage. And if we open our eyes, we would realize that what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. And by the comparison and conciliation of our differences, we will grow until our differences disappear. Our unity cannot be willed by mere declarations, nor do we get unity by ignoring the questions that beg for answers. We must celebrate our diversity and debate our differences without fracturing our unity. Our strength is not in our numbers, but in our unity, because even the weak become strong when united. Nigeria, unite! This message is brought to you by Abuja Broadcasting Corporation, owners and operators of ASO Radio 93.5 FM Abuja, ASO Television, DSTV, Channel 392, Star Times Terrestrial, Channel 127, Free TV, Channel 507, People's TV, Channel 285, and UHF, Channel 38. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Are you enrolled under the National Health Insurance? Do you have insurance for your health? Well, that is going to be the center of our discussion today on the program. And our guest on the program today is Mr. Martins A.K., who is a public health practitioner and the program manager at the Center for Social Justice. You're welcome to the program, Mr. A.K. Thank you. Good evening. Nice to be on the show. Thank you for being on the show. Um, so, like I said earlier, we're going to be talking about health insurance and universal coverage and the importance um, of everybody being under the health insurance scheme. Uh, but when we talk about health insurance, I don't want to take you for granted that everybody knows what health, ins health insurance is. So I'd like us to start from the question, what is health insurance? So health insurance is a contract that provides payment for the medical needs of people who are enrollees, people who are covered by the contract. Mm -hmm. Basically, the contract could happen annually, quarterly, monthly, or over any other fixed period of time. And it pays for your medical services such that whenever you need medical attention, all you have to do is just go to the hospital, receive the services, and walk away. Bearing in mind that the services has already been paid for ahead of time. Mm. So it's more or less a prepaid service arrangement. And then the, the services that you receive could be comprehensive or partial in the sense that it could cover all your medical needs or some of your medical needs. And then for situations where medical needs are covered, it could also cover the full range of payment for that particular medical need or parts of the payment for that particular medical need. So it all depends on the contracts. That okay. You okay. So how does it work now? Um, and just like I'm saying, I don't want to take you for granted that people know 
how this works and what this is. How does it work? Now, you said it's like a prepaid. I mean, you say prepaid, the first thing that comes to our mind is your NEPA view, you know? <laughs> Quite a number of people have a prepaid missile. So, does it yeah. work something like that? Or I just like give it, give, I just like you to give a, um, a clear um, explanation on it. How does it work? Okay, so the way it works is such that an individual has to pay a certain amount of money called premium. Mm -hmm. And that premium that you have paid, that amount of money that you have paid, determines the services that you receive. Now, you make that payment well ahead of time. You make that payment normally, right? Even if you are not ill. Mm. So whenever you fall ill, you don't need to start looking for cash to make out-of-pocket expenditure. Okay, that explains. Yeah. So whenever you are ill, all you then have to do is to walk into the hospital knowing quite where that payment has already been made. Now, for people who are maybe civil servants or people who work with government or in big um, private establishments, organized private establishments, they do it such that once you are a staff in that organization, you are automatically enrolled for the health insurance program because your organization already has a contract or an agreement with a HMO or any provider. So it becomes an automatic process. However, in situations where you don't have that automatic enrollment by virtue of where you work, the individual then has to work to maybe a HMO, health maintenance organization, walk into any HMO's office and tell them that you want health insurance. It is their duty. In fact, they would be happy that you even came because you made their job easier since it is their duty to even go out in search of persons to enroll. Apart from that, you could also walk into a bank. Just walk mm -hmm. into any bank and tell the people you meet at the customer care that you want to enroll for health insurance. The banks also have some provisions where they can give health insurance coverage for the individual that has come. But of course, bear it in mind that there's a certain amount of money that will be paid. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that when you pay, right, you are covered. Whenever you fall ill, all you have to do then is just walk into the hospital mm -hmm. and then receive the service that you have paid for. Even if for any reason you did not eventually fall ill, no problem. The society is better off because the money that you have contributed and the contributions of those who also did not fall ill will then be used to provide quality healthcare services for those who need it. So the, 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 the idea behind health insurance is just about pooling of funds. Let everybody contribute. Let everybody pay a certain amount of money. Mm. Then we know that not everybody will fall ill. So the total amount of money that has been provided by everybody will then be used to provide healthcare services for those who eventually needed the services when the time came. Okay, because you know one of the arguments, and sometimes it baffles me anyways, but one of the arguments and one of the things people use as, as basis not to enroll yeah. under the program is, I can take up to three years, yeah. I didn't go to the hospital, yeah. so what is happening to my money? And you know, uh, that mindset actually makes quite a number of people. We have over over 200 million officially or unofficially yeah. Yeah. unofficially um, people in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But as, as, as of the last count, I don't think we're more than 5 million people that have been enrolled under na national health insurance, you know. And one, I, I don't know if to say this is part of not being properly enlightened, but I know just like I said, one of the reasons is we just feel like when it comes to money, I don't know, people just think somehow, you know. So the, the, the thing is this, even if you do not fall ill, despite the fact that you've been contributing mm. over the last few months or years, your brother or your sister may fall ill, your, your uncle or your auntie or a relative or a friend mm. will fall ill. And it is that your contribution that will be used to provide services. Also, when you eventually fall ill, chances are high that the service you will receive will be more than what you have actually paid. Mm. So more or less, humanity is the winner. The society is the winner. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the society. I know of a story of a young lady who she shared an experience once. 
her mom was working in a particular establishment of course that establishment has a health insurance um, arrangement yeah. so the woman didn't even know that she has a health insurance plan all she knows is that every month she just receives her salary she doesn't know what has been deducted and what the deduction yeah, is it's for. Meant for so sometimes she fell ill seriously ill and she was looking for money somebody now told her but madam i think you work in susan and susu place she said yes the person said, that means you have a health insurance coverage she said she's not aware so because of that urgency they had to follow up the matter and discover that she had a health insurance um, plan mm. and then the health insurance plan was what was used to provide to pay for the services for that her illness mm. and the, the lady who was sharing the story said the amount of money that was spent to treat her mother then if it had been left to them they would not have been able to afford it in fact that the woman would have died because they didn't have the financial capacity to pay for the particular illness she was suffering from at that particular time mm. so you look at it and you discover that that means the contributions she had been making over the years yes now pays still off came back to her own advantage mm -hmm. because when she now critically fell ill whatever she had with her could not take care of True. what she the services and even the the service that was rendered to her was even more expensive than the total contribution she had, she had actually made. made all through that period mm. so it, it's 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 a win-win situation for everybody the society is better off mm -hmm. okay so you said you mentioned something about premium yeah. and i'd like us to delve in a little bit because the essence is so that people understand what this yeah. is and the importance yeah. now um you talk about premium what are these premiums explain this period let it not just look like english you yeah. know explain these premiums to also so people get to understand better how this works so basically the premium is the amount of money you pay mm -hmm. that qualifies you for health insurance coverage mm. that qualifies you to receive services now the amount you pay determines the quality of service you receive it determines even the range let me not use that it determines the range of services that you can receive so for some they pay an amount of money that gives them access to basic services like maybe malaria treatment general practice and mm. just basic services and some others pay amount of money that gives them access to more sophisticated treatments, surgeries, mm. right? Even certain cancer treatments, depending on how much you pay. So basically, the premium is the amount of money that you pay that will then give you qualification to receive access. And that money you pay determines the services you mm. can access. Mm. So for some, for some plans, the premium is 12,800 naira a year. Right? I think mm. that's probably one of the lowest. lowest. And then there are some where the premium is as much as 80 something thousand naira a year. Some pay 200 and something thousand. Some pay up to 500,000 naira or even more a year. Right? So that determines the services you will receive. And that payment is your premium. Okay. So um, one of the things we're also always bothered about is the fact that people still don't come to the understanding and why they should be enrolled under this program. Yeah and we cannot talk about health insurance without talking about the national health insurance agency thank god it used to be a scheme but now an authority i mean national health insurance authority it's now an authority meaning more powers have been bestowed on it how far or what can the nhia do to make sure that people are actually uh, brought under this program so that at least to a certain level we can begin to boast of universal health coverage now NHIA is the regulator of the health insurance regime hmm. in Nigeria. They are in charge. More or less, they oversee everything that needs to be done to see that things are moving the way it should. Fortunately, Section 14 of the National Health Insurance Authority Act, even in Section 3, too, has made the um, health insurance compulsory. For every nigerian so once you are a nigerian in fact once you are resident here right even if you you came from another country for an assignment mm. for the period that you do, health insurance is compulsory and because health insurance is compulsory it means that national health insurance authority already has that that legal backing that framework to see that they implement permit me to say the compulsoriness of 
the health insurance um, program in Nigeria. What can they do? Now, in some of the engagements we've had, we've discovered that a missing link in this whole health insurance ar arrangement is the cooperation between organized labor and the health insurance program. Mm. We've seen situations where in certain states, of course, you know the way it works. For those in organized um, labor, they have to contribute a certain percentage of their salary. Yes. And then um, the state governments or the federal, as the case may be, Contribute. also contributes a certain amount. We've seen situations where organized labor in certain states resisted the program because for several reasons. Number one, they've had situations where deductions were made from their salaries, right? Mm. But for one reason or another, the government did not provide its own fund yeah right so when the people now go to the hospital to receive the services they are denied the service because there's a certain amount of money that has not come that should have actually been paid mm. so then the, the workers then get angry that we are paying but we cannot receive service of course. therefore we we hereby pull out of because program. it does not make sense so at that moment yes at that moment so there's already a a a a, 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 a gap there's already a gap a deficit in trust so maybe when government now becomes willing, yeah, you could hear the labor, you guys say, we are not interested. We know, we know, do again, just mm. leave us out of this, your health insurance thing. So I think one thing that can be done is to bridge that gap in terms of having an honest and sincere conversation between organized labor and government so that everybody is on the same page, yes. right? So that at least the scheme can work fluently in the organized sector. Now, when that happens from the organized sector, because since they are organized, it's easier for it to work, right? Mm -hmm. And then when it works, the people in the informal sector can then see the benefits from their brothers and sisters yes. who are reaping the fruits of the health insurance arrangement. Then when that happens, the next thing would be to take the sensitization to the people in the grassroots. It's not enough to hold one town hall meeting once in a while where you have maybe 50 people or 100 people and all of that. No. Most Nigerians attend churches or mosques, wherever. Take the message of health insurance to the religious institutions. We all have traditional rulers that people listen to, especially in the rural areas. Mm. Take the message of health insurance to the traditional rulers. By the time you leave it to the National Health Insurance Authority, right, it becomes probably too much for them to disseminate the message to the 200 million or more Nigerians that we have. So the challenge there ha here is the dissemination of the message. All possible channels, religious institutions, traditional institutions, media, NOA, NOA all possible channels must be used to spread the message across. Mm -hmm. Another thing too is political leadership. In a state like Sokoto, for instance, the um, Sokoto State Contributory Healthcare Management Agency law expects or mandates political appointees to contribute a certain amount of their salary to the health insurance program. Mm. That is more of a show of commitment. That's, that's the governor's salary. Not just governor, but appointees. Appointees, all of yeah, them. Okay, of them. That's, that's nice. Yeah. So, but how or whether that is being done is what is I another thing. Do, but I know that is the position of the law, at least for that particular state. There's, there's a campaign we've done recently and we've written letters to legislators in certain states, certain focal states, even at the national level, asking them to enroll their, their constituents under health insurance program. Mm. Give health insurance to your constituents. Let it be your constituency project so that you can boast, you can boast that everybody in my constituency mm. or so-so and so percentage of my constituents have health insurance coverage. Mm. So that political leadership is also very, very important and it's something that is missing. So any child has to find a way to bring all the stakeholders and all the key actors together for them to be on the same page. Okay, because you know when you're talking about work being a bit stressful and a bit cumbersome for them, because uh, I also wanted to say that it must not necessarily have to be, um, um, how do we put it, them doing it by themselves, you know? It's not everything that you can do by yourself. There are lots of things that could be given out to other people to do, you know, like civil society organizations, just like you said, at the hospitals, NOA. Any child is supposed to be able to do something like that, you know, gather these people, okay, we can't do this on our own. We need a lot of dissemination of information for people to understand better how this thing works. Why isn't the NIA doing this? 
why is it difficult for this to work because just like you said they are the regulatory body they're not necessarily the ones doing this work you know yeah. so basically the work is actually for somebody to do what you're expected to do is regulated and i believe that if this work is regulated well i, I believe we'll see headway in this yeah. now we, you know we, it used to be national health insurance scheme yes right and for some reasons despite having this having this scheme around for about 20 years or thereabouts we couldn't hit more than five percent of enrollment mm -hmm. for our citizens mm -hmm. so at that point stakeholders met and brought out one or two recommendations on how it, the whole arrangement can be strengthened and that gave birth to the national health insurance authority, authority which uh, president Muhammad Buhari signed the act mm -hmm. sometime in may last year and it gave them more powers right of course elevating the head from executive secretary when he was nhis mm -hmm. to director general now yeah. that is nhia mm -hmm. so they now have that more power to act and get more results uh well it's been less than one year since they became nhia and i know that there is usually a lot of bureaucracy in government mm. so let's hope that going forward we are going to see a massive improvement in health insurance coverage as a result of massive coordination and regulation mm. by NHIA. I'd like us to still, still speak more on regulation okay. because now that we're talking, we're going more in-depth. Yeah. And you know, this it doesn't just end with NHIA. Yeah. And there's, there are lots of people, quite a number of people involved. So yeah. like you, I've heard you mention health management organizations, HHMOs, yeah. and the hospitals. Most yeah. especially, I think these are two key, key stakeholders that are in fact more directly involved with the individuals than the authority actually yeah. and one of the issues i'd like to raise is we have issues of people complaining that um, they go to the hospitals and because they're under health insurance they're not treated well or some people even complain that we're not even giving have good quality medication because we're under uh, um, health insurance and these are part of the things that make people say that i don't want to be on t under the scheme i'd rather pay out of pocket and get best uh, um, services than be under the scheme and then I am I'm treated like I am second class even at the hospital where I'm supposed to get quality health care. Um, I've had some engagements with healthcare providers and sometimes they blame HMOs, mm -hmm. right? I've also had engagement with the HMOs and then they blame the healthcare providers. <laughs> so right? it's a blame game. It's a blame game. And then sometimes the HMOs also blame NHIS now any child and accuse them of trying to be a regulator and a player right mm. asking them to stick to the regulatory functions and all of that so there's a lot of um, um blame game around right sometimes the healthcare facilities argue that the amount of money given to them by maybe the hmo they are contracted to is not enough to attend to all the patients that they have to attend to imagine a situation where you are giving a certain amount of money and after about two weeks you've the services you've rendered has covered 90 percent of that money you will discover that in the next two weeks right the second half of the month mm. you will then become very miserly with your services because you now have to ensure that you don't exceed that amount of money which you have or just play around it so these are the challenges that even the healthcare guys um say is mm. their problem mm -hmm. And then the people in the HMOs too, they also accuse the health facilities of one form of sharp practice or the other. So I think there's a lot of blame game around here. But what, what I think is that NHIA has a lot to do yes. here because they, they are the guys with that regulatory power to even sanction people where necessary. So, so everybody has to be on the same page. And then, and then I think I, I would just like to look at um, um, NHIA's role right in achieving or let me say the role of health insurance mm. in achieving universal, universal health, health coverage, coverage yeah. because it's very very key if we must attain universal health coverage then we cannot joke with health insurance mm -hmm. that is the simple truth when i say universal health coverage what do i mean i mean a situation where everybody has access to the health care that they need mm. when they need them where they need them right without undergoing any financial hardship yeah. we've seen situations where in certain rural areas maybe the doctor in the primary health care center comes maybe only on mondays only on wednesdays mm. or maybe on a particular day so 
if the doctor comes on a Monday, for instance, and then you fall ill on Tuesday, what so that means you have you? to wait till the next Monday. Mm. That is not universal health coverage. We've seen situations where people fall ill, right? And in that locality where they are, they can't get quality health care. They have to move from maybe um, their immediate rural locality to the so state another. capital, mm. for instance, to get better care. That is not universal health coverage. We've also seen situations where people like lose their livelihoods trying to pay for health services mm -hmm. maybe a family member or a loved one fall sick you have to borrow money of course that is you sell off your land your houses mm -hmm. you borrow money and then by the time the person eventually recovers you become a poor man permit me to put it that way it happens yeah, yeah. right so 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 these are the challenges that we really need to get it right and the only way we can get it right is through health insurance because of the numerous advantages that health insurance has. We cannot fix universal health coverage without health insurance. It's not possible. Okay. Universal health coverage is very key, you know, in fact, yeah. and just, just like I said in the introduction, the, the quality of, of a nation actually depends on the quality of its health care, or I would say the quality of the health of a nation depends on its health care system. And so if the health care system is not strong, and it still boils down to this health coverage, you know, health insurance. If we're not able to get health insurance, right, a lot and a lot. It also contributes to poverty, you know. And of course, it, just like you said, it also contributes to poverty. A lot and a lot of people will lose their livelihoods, paying out of pocket. And these are part of the things that make people not even want to go to the hospital. You know, because when they think, imagine the story you just told of the lady that said she, she doesn't want to go to the hospital because she doesn't have money. She's still looking for money. So imagine looking for money for weeks and weeks and months and months. And by the time you get it, your situation has deteriorated. Sometimes, you know, early detection helps in, 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 in treatment as well. But if it's not detected on time, you look for the money, you may end up getting it, but may not even be able to save your life. I'd like us to talk an in depth on how we can achieve this a wide coverage or, or a, 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 a significant number of people being covered by health insurance. But that will be when we come back from this short break. Do stay with us when we come back from this short break. Our discussion will continue on universal health coverage and the health insurance. Stay with us. We are a nation blessed with people of diverse cultures religions, languages, and opinions. It is ironic that we are now being ripped apart by our greatest strength, our diversity. We have allowed intolerance, insensitivity, bigotry, and nepotism to blind our vision of the greatness we can achieve working together as one. We may not have the same culture, nor religion, nor language, but we all belong to the same nation by the divine will of God. We did not choose to be Nigerians. Nigeria chose us. This nation is our divine heritage. And if we open our eyes, we would realize that what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. And by the comparison and conciliation of our differences, we will grow until our differences disappear. Our unity cannot be willed by mere declarations, nor do we get unity by ignoring the questions that beg for answers. We must celebrate our diversity and debate our differences without fracturing our unity. Our strength is not in our numbers, but in our unity, because even the weak become strong when united. Nigeria Unite. This message is brought to you by Abuja Broadcasting Corporation, owners and operators of ASO Radio 93.5 FM Abuja, ASO Television, DSTV Channel 392, Star Times Terrestrial Channel 127, Free TV Channel 507, People's TV Channel 285, and UHF Channel 38. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, this is Health and Wellbeing on our show television. And before we went on the break, I've been here with Mr. AK and we've been discussing universal health coverage and health insurance. So before we went on the break, we've been discussing how this coverage will work and how it will help to enhance um, universal health coverage and 
make people actually better, you know, save livelihoods, especially in this part of the world where just last year, um, a report from um, National Bureau of Statistics came out and said that over how many million Nigerians are multidimensionally poor. And one of the things that contributes to this is what paying for health care out of pocket. Um, there is something very key that I'd like us to talk on before we even delve on what can be done to make sure as many people as possible are brought under health insurance. The benefits, you know, why is it very important that we make sure, and I, I even forgot to mention or, um, that under the, the National Health Insurance Act, everybody is mandated, it's compulsory. So if you're not even under, the, under health insurance, you're actually violating a law. Yes, but what are the benefits of being covered by health insurance? Okay, so the first thing we talked about is uh, financial risk reduction, mm -hmm. which we've tried to explain before. There are a lot of people that fall ill and they cannot go to hospital. Not that they don't want to go, but they don't have the money, right? I talked of the instance where people can borrow and at the end of the day, they become poor and mm -hmm. treated mm -hmm. with their family members. <clears throat> Imagine a situation where you have health insurance. All you have to do is to walk into the hospital. So there's no financial risk as a result of illness. Yes. So that health insurance saves that financial risk. Another thing too is equity in health financing. Equity in health financing in the sense that, of course, the lower income earners will take a health insurance plan that is in line with their pockets. They mm -hmm. are setting plans for 12,800 naira a, a, a year. There are those of uh, maybe 50,000, 60,000, depending on your arrangement. Yes. And then they are also setting plans. So of course, the big man, because he's a rich man, mm, he, he, can more, he can afford right? it. Yes, he could, he, he could take a very high premium and pay for it. We will see. We can also have situations where many rich people pay huge amount of money as premium, and then they don't fall ill. Mm. What then happens is that the money paid by the rich will then be used to provide for health insurance poor. for the poor. So it brings that equity in financing. We then see situations where the rich is paying for the healthcare service of the poor. Mm. Another thing which, another benefit of health insurance is that it makes reliable a huge pool of funds for health service delivery. We are roughly 200 million Nigerians. Mm. Imagine a situation where everybody pays, let's say 1,000 Naira for health insurance. Let's just keep it at that minimum yes. price of 1,000 Naira per month, for instance. 1,000 Naira per month multiplied by, by 200, 200 million, million Nigerians. We're counting it gives billions. us to about 200 billion. Mm, 200 billion naira. Mm -hmm. Imagine having only that amount of money for health service delivery in a month. 200 billion naira is bigger than the budget of many states. Of course. Right? Mm -hmm. So it means that you don't have a large amount of money which could be used to provide health service. So health, the funding from health insurance can even be bigger than whatever government is bringing. Mm. So one benefit of health insurance is it makes available a large pool of funds. And this is even more relevant in situations where, if you depend on government budget, for instance, if you depend on government to fund health care, we could have situations where the government will tell you that the budget the budget this year is small. Mm, right? So they cannot maybe, cover. Maybe vandals <laughs> have destroyed pipelines mm. in the Niger Delta, so they are not selling as much crude. Or maybe there is corruption somewhere, they don't have enough money, right? Or probably the places they hope to borrow from to fund mm. the budget. They can't get they from there. Get. So the things they plan to do, they couldn't do. Government money can even be unstable. But if you have that reliable pool, where everybody has keyed in and seen the benefits and contribute regularly, the money you get there will be more. And you will then be helping the government to meet the minimum healthcare obligations of this. Because it is the duty of the government to provide healthcare services for the people. Mm -hmm. It is government's duty. So if you now have an arrangement where people are bringing in money that is helping to provide healthcare service, you are helping the government to carry out these responsibilities and you are reducing the financial burden on government. Mm. Another benefit of health insurance is that it reduces inequality. Now, one of the differences between the rich and the poor is that the rich can afford health care. Mm. Generally, Generally, when a rich man is ill, he, has, he just walks into a hospital and receives health service. Most poor people fall in and they cannot go and receive the health yes. service. So one thing that has one barrier between 
rich and poor is access to health care. Mm. But imagine a situation where you now have health insurance for the poor man. Right? The poor man is ill, he walks into the hospital and receives service. Rich man is ill, he walks into the hospital and receives service. You have reached in a, you have true, that in a quality true. gap between the rich and the poor. And, and it would also help, you know, in one of the, one of, you know, there are so many stories when you hear it breaks my heart. Basically, because you hear of someone that couldn't afford treatment of about 2,000, loses a pregnancy, loses, loses their life. You know, these stories, they just, it's almost like, why do we let these kind of things happen? So, I believe with, with health insurance, this kind of things can be eliminated because you could go in, there is no need of, Madam, come and pay, or got pay before you see doctor, you know, you pay for this, be, pay for that. But with health insurance, I believe it would, it would cover a lot of that. Now, talking about regulation, uh, I, and I, I started talking about it before the break, um, and the fact that health insurance, do? yes, uh, yeah, what can we do to make sure that so many people are brought uh, under her? Uh, and, and like we said, under the act, everybody, it's compulsory for everybody yes. to be covered, yes, compulsory. by health insurance, you know. But I don't see a penalty there. Okay, so, so that, that's the thing. Section 14 of the National Health Insurance Authority Act, and even Section 3B of the Act, has stated it clearly mm. that health insurance is it's compulsory. compulsory. Unfortunately, there is no penalty right mm. or not enrolling so we have a situation where something is compulsory but nothing happens to you if, you, if don't. you don't do it it becomes a problem now most people who drive cars and not most everybody who drives a car in nigeria will have vehicle insurance mm -hmm. it is a law that you need insurance for your vehicle and if your vehicle does not have insurance police via you no safety all of them will arrest you <laughs> so people just go and get insurance for their vehicles now, if you can get insurance for your vehicle, why can't you get it for your health? Between mm. your health and your vehicle, which this one is more important? important? Which one do you even need to insure? So, but because there's somebody enforcing it for vehicles, people respond. And then there's nobody enforcing it for your health. Mm. Everybody then, you know, relaxes. So, if we really have to make health insurance, you know, compulsory and get that huge enrollment, it then boils down to enforcement. Mm. The enforcement has to be key. But you cannot start enforcing something that people don't even know. Don't, and even right? understand. And don't even understand. Because if you do that, you will probably put everybody in prison. Mm. They are saying the Nigerian prisons are congested. It will be a joke. <laughs> well, well the penalty doesn't necessarily have to be being in prison, you yeah, know. Uh -huh. yeah, so so what, what it then means is that there is something that government needs to do. Right, that stakeholders need to do that has not been done that is causing the uh, um, gap. In the, in the National Health Insurance Authority Act, there's something called the Vulnerable Groups Fund. And mm. then there's the equivalent of it too in the states, the Equity Fund. Mm. Now, that fund states that the law, the National Health Insurance Authority Act states that 1% of the consolidated revenue fund of the Federal Republic of Nigeria should be put in that Vulnerable Group Fund. That vulnerable group fund will provide health insurance service for the poorest of the poor, mm. for people who cannot afford it. Because if you like, say it is compulsory, the most people who cannot afford it mm -hmm. because of their financial situation. Yes. So the government has to make provision for those categories of people. So that's what the vulnerable group fund is there to achieve. But unfortunately, there is no, no money has been put into that fund. Okay. So you now have a fund that has been created. But there's no money in it, so the fund cannot deliver. So one key thing that needs to happen if we must get massive enrollment is for people to be to be put in charge of manning the fund and money released to the fund. Mm. And there is, there's also the equivalent of it in the state equity fund. So the state governments can also ensure that one percent of the consolidated revenue fund of the states should then go to that equity fund mm. in the state. Even the local governments too can take out one percent of the of their CRF for the equity fund in their own local government. So that that way, you will take care of the poorest of the, the poor, poor who ordinarily cannot afford health insurance coverage. Now, so I, th I think that is something that is very key mm -hmm. that has to be done. Another thing I'd like us to talk about quickly is um, how to get, you know, when I was calling statistics, I said 200 million more documented or undocumented. <laughs> yeah. Official or unofficial, there are a lot of people that are not documented in Nigeria. Now, we could even start with basics. How do we get these people documented? 
under the on to be under the program even if they won't pay let them let it just be that at least they are registered eh? i believe that could, that could be a, a, a stepping stone to start how do we go about that because like i said a lot of people are not documented how do we even start with the documentation process so when you say a lot of people are not documented um you know um, um nimc national identity management commission yes. and the rest have been collecting documentation so the document I, I would see that nigerians at least there's some documentation that so so and so so person is a doing Nigerian, yes by virtue of the fact that he has his uh, national identity card mm -hmm. so what we then need at this point is for people to enroll that's the way i would see for people to enroll what you may see as documentation i would see it as people enrolling, enrolling. into yes. the scheme mm -hmm. basically and like i said there has to be certain things the 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 the, the, the guys in charge have to bring out a time frame for massive sensitization massive sensitization i did a town hall meeting in one of the state capitals recently and i discovered that even people who are from the academic world that should understand the health insurance scheme and how it's functioning don't even understand much about it. You see people who are very enlightened. You expect that, okay, these guys know so much about health insurance. And they don't know anything about it. Mm. Then imagine what it is for, for the people. guys at the grassroots mm -hmm. who, who know next to nothing generally. So there's a lot of sensitization that and needs to be done. done. A lot of sensitization needs to be done. Then apart from that sensitization, that is where you now, after doing the sensitization, you now have the boldness to start enforcing the compulsory enrollment mm -hmm. into that scheme. If you don't have to enforce the compulsory enrollment, there's no way you can get it. Right. Oh, okay, then, and now that's, I think that's what I, I still want to talk a little bit inside. How do we enforce compulsory? You know, and that was also brought about talking about documentation because I believe that there should be a point, at least at one point or the other, where somebody should go to the hospital. Can't something be done where you would see when you are at the hospital and realize that you are not under health or you are not covered by health insurance? We make you register at that moment. Can what done. can't that help? It's, in fact, it will help. It will help. It will help to a long way. But the challenge is for now, most people are not aware of. The scheme mm -hmm. and how it works mm -hmm. and the fact that it is compulsory right so before you start doing that you need to do general sensitivity so that you know that people are now aware mm -hmm. after which you can then start that enrollment on the spot when you get them come to your mm -hmm. health facility mm -hmm. but that sensitization has to be done first okay. before you can then start Thank you very much, Dr. Ike, for taking time to be here with us on the program. And before we round up, just in a few minutes, I'm, I'd just like you to tell us briefly what C H CSG has been doing uh, um, so far to making sure that um, these things are actually put in place, you know, things that are supposed to put, some things just feel like they're so big, but they're not so big, you know. But what, are, what is your organization as uh, a CSO doing? making sure to make sure that people are even sensitized about health insurance so you know you know just have one key thing that has come out of my conversation today is that there is a deficit in sensitization and awareness mm. many people who should know don't actually know so one thing we are doing is that we are going around the states as much as we can to organize town hall meetings talk to people about insurance tell them what health insurance is all about and how they can enroll there are places we go to and somebody just gets so excited and said okay how do i enroll mm. there and they will give out the information on this board so we've held town hall meetings in different states and by by in the next few days i should be off to some other states to continue the town hall meetings which is just the sensitization and mm. so are, are we going to see further engagement between you and nhia because i believe more CSOs should actually be able to um have this kind of um, interactions with nhia to even help you know so that if you're going for this town hall meetings you have um, people that are in, in whatever different um, um health insurance coverages that could follow you so if people are interested you could even enroll them on the spot and see how that will go thank you very much mr Eki, for taking our time to be here with us on the program we sincerely appreciate your presence thank you very much thank you nice to be here well that's how much we can take on the program today do remember please go and be covered by health insurance it would help you it would go a long long way in even saving your livelihood do keep it a date with us same time next week i remain your host lois Appasambo, and do stay safe by getting covered by health insurance thank you <laughs>